thanks for hopping on here. I'm excited to uh, to get things going here. So just to give everybody a little background, um, I've known Drew for uh, for quite a while. He's an artist, illustrator, educator, um, and he's a super creative guy, which you know I um, I love, and I, I think uh, he does a lot of great work. Um, so I just wanted to have him on here to talk about um, you know creativity in general. Just to keep it a little bit more specific to this episode, um, I know I've been spanning uh, a few different topics um, on my other episodes. Um, so with this episode, we'll, we'll focus on creativity and, and kind of see where we go from there. So um, Drew, thanks for being here. Hey, Mark, man. Thanks for uh, having me on. You know, this quarantine time, we're uh, not together in person, obviously, but it's good to hang out and uh, it's a pleasure. Yeah, yeah. So um, just to, to get people caught up on things, um, I know you do a lot of stuff, like I said, from from uh, artwork to education, um, and now we're talking about creativity today. So, uh, just wanted to see, you know, um, your thoughts. We'll kind of get it kicked off here, um, and it's something I've thought of quite a bit and um, been kicking around with other creatives to see, you know, really the nature versus nurture, um, you know, from a creative standpoint. What are your thoughts on that? Mm. Yeah. I mean, that's a great question. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's one of those questions I think is pretty loaded, but, and I'm, I kind of answer questions in ways that people don't always like where, you know, I'm sure somebody just wants one answer is in one or the other, but you know, I'm going to do the non-popular answer here and just say, I think it's a little bit of both maybe, um, how to test that thing is, uh, you know, a little bit difficult when, uh, when you come up with a measuring tool for that, just let me know. Um, but yeah, honestly, I think, For me personally, I can answer, you know, I think there's some people, maybe it's through genetics or different things, or maybe how their brain is wired, you know, probably a little bit more creative. Um, But I do think it's something that you kind of have to harness, you know, um, you know, whether you're a a believer in that you got this gift, you know, I think even if you're a believer of like God gives you a gift or whatever it is, I think you still kind of have to honor that and work on it. Um, Even if it's something is like, You know, I know going into college, there were some uh, students that got a scholarship over me um, and they were really good artists. But, um, you know, I just almost like a Kobe Bryant, I just put in more practice, I think. And now I'm at a point where, you know, I'm just on a different level than than them. Not saying anything negative, but just saying that, like, for me personally, you know, I I was always pretty skilled at like seeing things and drawing them. And that was like kind of my skill but I really had to learn how to like nurture the creativity. And, um, and I never really looked at myself as a creative person, but after really like, you know, just exposing myself to other people, talking to other people and giving myself some confidence, it really is, I think something that you can practice and like a muscle, you can really get stronger. And I've seen that a lot and it really comes in to almost like a child plays and they just, you know, they're not thinking too much. They're just in a playful state. Um, when you give yourself enough freedom to just kind of play with ideas um, and just let yourself, whether it's dancing in the kitchen, cooking your favorite meal and acting like a fool, sometimes that's when like your best jokes just come out of nowhere, you know? And I think a lot of times it's just getting out of your own way. And, you know, as we get older, we think we know a lot about something and that's cool, but that can also be dangerous. And that doesn't allow us to kind of like open this channel up to take what's right in front of us and create something that's even cooler or something that's more effective than a tool we already have or just a creative idea to use for business. So, so like, you know, even when you were younger, you didn't consider yourself a creative, like what was that point where you realized, okay, I'm not going to be an accountant, you know, or, you know, something that is very specific, you know, you're not going to go the medical route. Um, Because I feel like a lot of people still struggle, you know, even younger kids, you know, my brothers, um, you know, going into college, and uh, it it doesn't seem like people are as zeroed in to know exactly what they want to do. And going into the creative field is much more of a a seemingly, um, you know, scarier venture, because things aren't guaranteed. Mm -hmm. So when did you know, kind of like, this is the route I'm going to take and go, go, you know, double down on the creative or, you know, art field? Yeah, no, it's great. Um, I think, well, there's, it's loaded there too, because, you know, we put so much pressure on, you know, 18 year olds to know exactly what they're supposed to be doing. And, uh, 
you know, that's a whole nother podcast for another topic, but, um, but really, yeah, for me, I just, I think, well, for me, my quick story is I struggled to read as a child and I was in reading classes all the way up to fifth grade. And I really like, I had a lot of anxiety reading and it's almost like I couldn't break down reading into like smaller steps. I was so overwhelmed and I just couldn't read and, uh, and then trying to do it in class. And then I lost confidence. And my mom noticed that I liked to kind of draw things and I couldn't communicate well except for through just drawing. So she actually encouraged that. And I think just over time with practice, but it wasn't until I was, you know, going to take that step to go to college or what was next, you know, and I was an art major in high school. So I was kind of developing my skill, my hard skill, but um, I would usually like people would give me advice on ideas and then I was good at like illustrating them or helping bring them to life. And that's still kind of how I run my graphics side of my business for business owners. Like I help bring your vision to life and I like relationships. So I like to sit down with them, consult with them, you know, and help them actually create a brand that they're happy with and help them feel like they're part of the process. So I think that's part of like something that's cool about me. And I lean into that, but I remember, you know, I didn't know what I was going to do. I just knew I liked to draw and it was something that, and pain and, you know, do, you know, do, illustration work and stuff it helped me kind of deal with stress and kind of you know work through my feelings but my mom just said I'm I I think you're going to go to school and you're going to learn the computer programs you know and I'm just like (laughs) I don't know mom but you know I trust you you know and my mom's always been a huge influence she's always pushed me and honestly my mom has no idea what Photoshop and Illustrator are yeah Um, she just knew okay this is where things are going and um, so she kind of just you know helped give me some guidance and, uh, and dude, I, it was a big learning curve for me because I didn't really play with a lot of those softwares. Um, and when I got into college, I needed to like, I was like behind. Um, but like I said, I really like put practice in, but the, to answer your question, like more directly, cause I can be long winded. There was a guy in my class, his name was Seth Birch and he's now, I think head of all the marketing at Westchester university. And there's a reason he's doing that. And because he's a really creative guy, he's got tons of ideas and he made it into the program, my graphic design program, only because he was creative. This guy, and if he's listening, he'll laugh and he might listen because he, he knows the network. Um, he didn't have a lick of you know, illustration skills at all. And our professors would lean into him and just like use him as an example. Cause sometimes when it comes to art, like, and like, People can really rip your stuff up. Like you do a portfolio review, you're going to leave that portfolio review feeling like a piece of, you know, S H I T. So you got to be, people think that artists are like sensitive people, but like, dude, like we got to build up this alligator skin. But anyway, <laughs> this, this kid, I could really draw and he had really good ideas. So we, when we worked together in groups, like we crushed it. We were just like, and I, I saw that in him. I'm like, you know, it, it allowed me to kind of like, say like what is what is it that he does like so i learned from him a little bit on like his process or how he you know thinks of things and how he gets creative and he really just taught me it's all about just connecting ideas from different places and just being open and he's like the most open guy you'll ever meet and like there's just something to that just like he's always willing to learn something new almost like a child like he's never afraid to say he doesn't know something and I was like, I think there's something to that, you know? And so, yeah. So would you say that's like a key? Cause I was even thinking about that earlier today. I was talking with somebody and having more or less like that childlike wonder or curiosity. Oh yeah. How important is that for being a creative? I don't know that you can be creative without that. Right. I mean, what are your thoughts? Yeah. And I think that's the hard part about being an artist and a creative and bringing the two together. Sometimes you have just people that are one or the other sort of, um, or you have people that are so creative and they're coming up with crazy ideas, but they have a hard time marketing them. They can't find the audience to work with them. So you get all kinds of different sides of the spectrum, but, um, yeah, the, remind me your question, sorry. I'm just, I'm, so yeah, just, I guess the, uh, you know, that's, that's important to have that childlike. Oh yeah. Yeah. Curiosity. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, I'm just, can, I get a little can you excited. be a creative? Yeah, I, I think like you know there are creative solutions to things, but to be a true creative and you know thrive and and actually have a business like you do, do you have to have that? Is that essential? 
Um, I think, it, I mean, it's a good question to say essential. I mean, I think if you have the hard skill, you, I mean, that's really important. If you're a graphic designer and you can create a logo and you can listen to what the client's vision is, that's key. But I think as an artist, we're always looking like, what's my style? And that's what I, I've been trying to find, like where, what's my brand? And I've been spending more time there. Um, but I think, you know, I think it's really something where like, I find myself getting the best ideas. Like when I'm just in the kitchen, like I'll take a break. And again, I have the luxury to work from home. I'll take an hour break from 12 to one. And I'll just kind of dance in the kitchen, put on a song I love. And like, I just, I mean, so, I don't care if anybody, so. give yeah, me, I don't care. Give me a song. What, what do you, what do you, oh, I mean, I do it. I mean, if I'm watching the dishes, I'm listening to Busta Rhymes cause that those dishes are getting done quick. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, maybe I'm old school, you know, dating myself there, but it doesn't matter whatever it is, what, you know, whatever it calls to you, but everybody's got that music that just kind of like, and again, music's one of those outlets that kind of touches into that place that kind of gets you out of your own way. Like I talked about before. But I think, I think playing and getting yourself into a place where you kind of get out of yourself. You're not worried about looking like a fool. Like, I think that's why comedians do so well when, cause they don't like necessarily care what people think. And when they get raunchy or whatever, they're just like letting themselves just let it flow and they can just get out of their own way. And I think that's definitely a, like a theme with most creatives. And I think that's how you end up tapping into your creativity. If you're worried a lot about, what people think, which is something I struggle with. And when I'm, and that goes into perfection. Like even in the classroom that I teach, I have, instead of like, you know, uh, hate has no home here. People put that sign in front of their house. I put yep. perfection has no home here. Like we strive for perfection, but perfection isn't something that is necessarily attainable because it's like, it doesn't necessarily exist. And when we try to be too perfect, we're worried too much about how things look rather than letting it go and it's weird like if you just let things go completely and that takes trust and faith like ideas are actually right in front of you and you just end up noticing them it's mm -hmm. I, it's the only way i can explain it and like it took me a long time to actually figure that out but like it's it's amazing and it's just really cool but and again i like when people talk about creative blocks and stuff for me like I'll just go like I'm fortunate in, enough again to live near the Wissahickon in Philadelphia. And if I'm struggling with a creative you know, idea and I know I'm getting into that perfection, just trying to make it perfect, I'll go take a walk in the woods with my dog, just relax, get out of my way. And I come back and I'm just like, all of a sudden, it's like things just start flowing. And you really, you just got to take a break. You got to get away from it. You're too involved. You know, and a lot of times it's like a macro versus micro. You're too into it. You can't see outside, you know? Right. So, and it's so, it's so cliche, but it's really like, you know, sorry, people, again, it's, that's the answer, <laughs> at least for me, you know? Yeah. I mean, it, it seems so, so simple that how could that be the solution? But I mean, I feel the same way. I, I go for a run or I just, there's something about being outside and just, you know, mm -hmm. just walking or running or, or whatever mm -hmm. it is. So I was going to ask that, like, where, you know, how do you, how do you kind of rejuvenate or get those juices flowing again? But I mean, that's a, a very easy thing that anybody could do if you're running into some kind of creative block, just get outside and, you know, yeah. walk around or run or do something. Yeah. Um, a lot of times it's, we're putting so much pressure on it's on like ourselves or the project, like even with the C plastic pledge project that I was working on, the mayor's art. Um, for fun, I just put all, all five options that I came up and just have people, you know, see what they think about it and create some good conversation. But, um, you know, like coming up with five options for a logo is a lot. And, you know, some might say, is that too many? Does that make the client, you know, make the job harder for the client? And I would say five is probably that max because then it's too many. But um, I would say for me, like, I found myself trying to make it too perfect. And like, I really love this guy's mission, Steve's mission. And him and I have become like pretty close just working on this project alone. And I, I felt like I wanted to do it justice. And, you know, I felt myself getting wrapped up, too wrapped up with trying to make it something, you know, that it's really not. Like I just had to take a break, come back to it. And then when I come back and look at him, I'm like, wow, these like, I got some really cool stuff here. Like, whoa. 
Yeah. You know, I'm like, okay, let me like, I'm just, just going too hard on this. I just need to relax. And again, that answer people don't like, but my brother is a life coach and he just always will remind me. He's like, Drew, you breathing? He's like, in and out, bro. And I'm like, ah, <laughs> oh, man, I didn't notice. I was so tense. I wasn't even freaking breathing. My shoulders are like this. And we like forget to like notice our body, you know, what's going on. So. Well, do you, do you realize that? I mean, maybe that goes in line with, you know, getting outside and walking, you know, you're breathing, running, you're breathing. Do you yeah. meditate or do any of that kind of stuff? Does that help? Yeah, definitely. I mean, my brother, you know, again, he'll, he'll be like, Drew, you're not meditating enough. You know, I'm like, come on, Dave. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, he's very passionate about it. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, I think, again, like, if we can kind of sit and notice like what's happening with your body. And I think, you know, I, I feel like mental health is a big topic right now. And like, we're just learning and we're just scratching the surface. But the more I do this kind of work, the more for me, and I think whatever you do, you have to believe it. Cause if you don't believe it, then who else is going to, but for me, I've been through a lot of different things like a back issue, you know, even like therapy with my wife. And I've noticed like, man, I really can be defensive and kind of hold my ground and I like, get tense. And I notice like when my body is intent, when, in, when it's tense like that, I'm like holding on to things. But when I can relax and let go, like things start moving through and flow. So then like ideas that come in that maybe aren't so good, I can kind of see, oh, they're not so good. I can kind of let that go. And even to the point where you got to really get yourself out of the way where you, like even with a client, I might have an idea I really like and I'm trying to sell it to them, but they bring up something that I haven't seen that I know that, okay, now they gave me that information. I can tell that this logo is not going to be the right one for them. And I can feel my, myself being like, you know, being too attached to that logo and then having to like, I notice in my body, I'm like tense again. And I'm like, okay, like, you know, it's not for me. This is for the client. This is what's best for them allow myself to relax into it. And then I'm like, okay, I can see what they're saying. And then the, that logo or their suggestion ends up being what, you know, maybe I go back to the drawing board, I take their idea and we come up with something that's so much better than something I could do on my own. And that's just like, again, my whole thing is just getting the hell out of your own way, man. Yeah. You know? So it seems the breathing be- is huge. You're like, you're saying. Yeah, it's it's something I have to remind myself to do sometimes. You know, it's even this uh, this quarantine. I feel like it's just you know it's yeah. it's become stressful lately this past week, and it's mm-hmm. just like sometimes I just need to get up and and you know whether I'm working on a creative project or not, it's like you know you, you do have to breathe and uh, and sometimes get out of your own way. Any any other any other like barriers that you typically run into? You know, like I guess just me personally is is running into the issue of. I know you kind of touched on it before is like, you know, not wanting to put it out there and look like, you know, mm. a fool or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, do you ever feel that way or, and, and how do you deal with that? Oh dude, like I'd be lying if I didn't say I'd deal with it every day, you know, yeah. but I think it's, um, I've made a commitment for myself to, to be open to that and like improve on that. And I think everybody wants to do self-improvement and all that stuff, but you got to be kind to yourself too. And like, even like you find, like I've found it in books. I didn't think I would find it. Like I even read a book. Um, what is it? Uh, um, the art, the subtle art of not giving an F. Yeah. You know, have you heard of that book? I'm familiar with that. Yeah. And you know, even like finding things in that book, that's just, you know, that just kind of helps you get out of your own way. And, um, you know, and again, I'm kind of losing focus here, making sure I'm answering your question. But what, well, yeah, what would um, be like um, a tip if, if somebody's struggling? Like, you know, obviously they can go for a walk, they can meditate, yeah. you know, just kind of take a deep breath. Um, is there anything else that you could or that you've found that works, whether it's mm-hmm. like a little, little mantra, a little reminder? Like, there's something I've been, you know, using to kind of get out of my own way for even putting this stuff out there. Um, you know, because I'm always concerned with, you know, more or less the problems that could arise from putting mm-hmm. things out there, whether oh, yeah, you know, yeah. the probability of it is probably so small, but just opening yourself up to a community of the internet is a scary thing when I'm more of an introverted person, I'm more of a private person. Um, but I know mm-hmm. that, you know, I want, I've been wanting to do this for a while and 
something I have to do just to kind of get this creative idea out and not have regrets about it. So um, I've been telling myself more or less, you know, as opposed to what can go wrong, what can go right. Um, so I keep reminding mm. myself yeah. of, you know, the low probability of the things that I worry about and mm -hmm. how much upside could be from, you know, doing this, working with you, putting this together, like what, you know, who stumbles across this and, and what could come of this um, from our conversation is the things that I'm trying to focus on. Um, so do you have anything, you know, yeah. like that or, or anything you remind yourself of that, that could help other people? Yeah. And it's great that you brought me back because I was losing focus because even me, like I can be vulnerable right now and just say, you know, I'm, I'm trying to also make sure, okay, am I saying the right thing? You know, so it's just right there just showing that, you know, we struggle with, what we're putting out there and trying to make it perfect. And, you know, it's, it, you know, it, it, there's never anything, there's never like a right time for anything. And that's like a reminder for myself, but I heard some of the language you used and how you kind of would change your language. And it really just, I would suggest people taking a look at their language and what they're using. Um, but going back to what I was saying about that book, the subtle art of not giving an F what really I was present to in that book is he said a lot of creators, creative people, you know, there's this stigma of like how to like, you know, um, get inspired. Like, how do you get inspired? And there's this question about, you know, does inspiration come? Is it something that just comes to some people? You know, um, and he kind of had this really cool look at it. And he just said, and I guess it's kind of Buddhist, but he said, really, the only thing that is inspirational, inspiration only comes out of action. And that's it, period. And I was kind of like, okay, what the heck does he mean? Yeah, what does that mean? Exactly. So I was like, okay, let me look at it more. And he kind of, I would definitely highly suggest checking out the book because he'll be able to explain a little bit better than me. But um, basically what he says is if you're just sitting there trying to get inspired um, and maybe you, you're taking an action by looking at another artist or another designer, like that is an action and you can get inspiration from there. But he said the true inspiration comes from yourself. And you're kind of like, yeah, again, cliche or whatever. And some people say like, you got like Tony Robbins. He's like, I'm not a motivator. You know, I can't motivate you. Only you can do that, you know. But I'm always like, okay, well, these guys are saying this stuff. What does that mean? So I've been questioning that. And then I found this in the book is basically what he's saying is taking action first, meaning like, you know, for me, just sketch. Like there's always something we've always wanted to do. We just, you know, and for me, it's like, okay, the sketch you know, this portrait of this particular person, you know, so I'm just going to actually start sketching it out and doing it and stop trying to worry about it being perfect and just do it. Like really just, so get in a mental space of like, just action, like kind of like, again, using your language to say action is the most important thing. And then what you do is once you take that action, then you see yourself doing it and you actually get inspired by it. And there's going to be times where, you know, you have to be kind with yourself and you have to take a Buddhist or like a, you know, this is where mental health is key. Because a lot of times, sometimes we might take that action. And again, like you, you're just starting this podcast. And, you know, as artists, we're our biggest, um, you know, critic. But being really, you know, finding what's good in it and like what we did well and then building on that. And if we can get inspired by that, then that creates the next action and next action. And even for me, what's like, for me, sometimes I don't take action because I'm afraid of not only how people are going to think about it, but how, you know, how my impact's going to be on the environment or even like, you know, am I going to displease somebody? You know, let's like just stay on that for, for a moment because that's all something we struggle with. But one thing I'm, I'm learning, it really boils down to, you know, take that action. Somebody's going to get upset with me. And then when they communicate that to me, all it is is information for me to get and then take another action. So maybe I take a sidestep like, oh, I did this art piece and it offended somebody. I still can say, well, this is me and this is who I am. Or I can say part of my commitment is to connect with people. And this person didn't connect with my artwork for some reason. Or they're part of my team on my graphic design team and they don't like this idea. Let me get to know and actually connect with them. And I get to take the next action. And all it is is just action. Yeah. And then we're like, then when we take that action, we're actually out of our comfort zone. And we're like, wow, like I did something different there. Like I can actually do this. And then you inspire yourself and then you take the next action. So it's really like 
there, and I'll just say like this, there's no action in your head. If you're in your head, like an idea is do, you know, come, but I think even that question is interesting. I don't know if ideas really kind of come from your head, really. I think, you know, maybe I think there's obviously your brain and your thinking brain, but I think it's all like my best ideas are coming from like when I stop thinking so much and I just like take an action and then, you know, um, and you just kind of get in the flow. And I know there's a big topic on flow these days and books written about it. Mm. And that's a topic I want to check out, but you know, um, so yeah, I don't know if that's helpful for people, but really just, if there's one thing I can give is like, next time you're worried about something, just take action. And even if that means like, okay, I'm not going to put the podcast out there, but I'm still going to go through with the podcast and I'm going to listen to it. And wow. And then you'll be like, wow, I just did it. And I see maybe where I would do something different. Like, don't stay in your head. Get the cat out of your head. So yeah. that's my thing. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's that's the most important part. And, you know, I'm realizing that going through this saying, okay, we did this. This was good. How can I maybe make this, you know, better or, you know, a better listening experience for people and and kind of um, really draw out what's most important from, from having these conversations. So, um, mm-hmm. Yeah, like every episode for me has been a learning experience nonetheless. Um, you know, this this has become more of like a um, interview style, but I'm I'm as I'm sitting here realizing this, it's you know, something that I I maybe want to explore more and you know, be a little bit more focused. I know we were talking about um creative barriers before and how, you know, having completely open space to do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. sounds great in theory and i think you know for me at least to get out of my own head and kick this off again i needed to go to that place and say you know what this isn't going to be just this group of people or it's going to be this style let's just kind of like do it which mm-hmm. you know have been you know the previous episodes and now you know i'm getting more into a comfortable state where i'm like okay maybe this could flow nicely even if I want to do it interview style or, you know, mm-hmm. drill into s- specific things versus just letting it go wherever it is. Um, yeah. And, and it, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Cause yeah, I mean, if, if you're passionate about it, like, again, if you just take that action, like what's cool, man, like, is you're going to learn something every single time you do it. And like some people want the aha moment or something just to click. But even when I left my job to go out on my own, I'm like, Oh, everything's just going to be cool now that I do this. Like, but I always say the grass is always greener, but you still got to get a lawnmower and cut it, you know, like, <laughs> and I, so, you know, if you can really just like, like, oh, be open and, and keep doing it and keep taking action. The cool thing is you get to learn something new every day and then you sleep so good at night. Cause you're like, okay, I'm on this journey. I'm on this trajectory. Cause I took action today. I learned something today. And that's really what it's all about. Like that is being in that place. And then also too, I, going back to language, I do think language is so important. And like, you even talked about something you have to do. And on my, uh, that project I'm doing with my brother called Well Open, where we kind of connect with people that are maybe struggling with something mental health based. And I create illustrations and my brother writes the content. And it's just about opening people up to like, maybe thinking about things differently, using art and like curated content to do that. I have one illustrated on there of a guy leaning down and he looks like he's tired and you can't see his head but you can see like his lower section and in his hand he's got a key and the key it's like one of those old keys that gets you in like one of those old doors it's like that old style key um but on it it says um it says get to and then he's got like a ball and chain on his leg and the lock um that's sitting there um like where the key would go into right there on next to that is the ball and chain and on the ball and chain is carved in get or uh, have to. So like when we have to do something, it really does kind of kill our creativity. And I think it shuts off the creative side of us where we're like, Oh, we have to do it. Oh, I got to do this. Uh, you know, and it becomes like a chore rather than when we get to do something, it's like an opportunity and we're open. Like that, that's an opening type of language. Oh, I get to do this. Like when I've, Hey, there's times I got to go, I'm going to teach my class. And, you know, I, sometimes I'm so passionate about what I do, but sometimes I got to like, I got to, I got to open the students up to a place where they, they get to learn. So I have to like, you know, I have to learn some of that. And like some days I'll be honest, I'm like, Oh, I got, 
I have to go in. I got to, I got to do this. And then I'm like, you know what? Like, no, I'm going to be bringing that energy in the classroom. You know, I get to do this. Like I have the opportunity to like change these kids lives. Like, what am I doing? And then I go in there, dude, those days when I go in just with that change of language, dude, we have like, we like my students will come up with some creative stuff. I'm just like, where the heck did that come from? You know? And like, it's probably just from my language and me coming in with my energy. Um, So there's that. And then also another thing is going back to what you were saying is one thing I'm present to as well, that when I'm feeling stuck or like unsure about whether I should do something or not, I do now ask myself the question like, okay, am I going to lose or like, and maybe losing is a negative way to look at it, but like, am I going to, maybe you can say gain, but am I going to gain more by not doing this or gain more by doing this meaning or like, and some people like the negative and that's, I'm still okay with the negative in this case. But like, if you say, am I going to lose out more on like not doing this or lose out more on like, you know, not doing it as opposed to doing it. Cause you never know. You could not put out your podcast because you're afraid of or feeling it not, it's not right, but you might put it out there and someone might say, Hey, like, you know, and has this opportunity for you. You have no idea. And it might not have anything to do with your podcast, but it connects you to something that you're just interested in outside your podcast. Right. So that's where like, we just have have no idea what that cost is, you know, of not doing something. So sometimes I get myself present to like, you know, that. And then I think, wow, that could be a cool opportunity. Maybe there's something out there I have no idea about. And I, if I just do this, it could open up a door. I have no idea this door is going to be there. Um, so all I know is like, you know, if I don't, if I don't open myself up to, you know, love and creativity, like, you know, I know for sure nothing's going to come in, but if I open myself up to it, it's not guaranteed it's going to come and I'm going to come up with something, but my chances are at least I, it can. Right. So they're higher. Yeah. Higher, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Cause if you just sit in your house, you don't do anything, you know, you're not going to, you know, it's yeah. not going to come to you unless you're putting things out there or you're going out and meeting people or what, whatever you're yeah. trying to do. So, um, you know, you do have to put yourself out there really if, if you want to attract things. So, yeah, I think that's, um, yeah, man, man. important. And I um, love what you're doing. Like, I love the intro. Like I might even just listen to my own podcast here just to hear the intro. Yeah. Like, I, I love it, man. Like, I think I want to acknowledge you for that and just give you feedback. And that's the best part. Like, if we really want to learn like this life, we get to learn about ourselves. It's the greatest gift we have, man. Think about it. And like, but we don't get to know and learn about ourselves unless we take a step. And mm-hmm. like, it's scary because we take a step. There's going to be negativity that comes back. People are not going to like a decision we make, but all it is is information to tell us to take that next action. Like I told you. And like, you know, you wouldn't have thought like, like, I, and I'm, I'm, I want to make sure too, as a creator and somebody in my life that's committed to helping people create their best lives, whether it's through visual and creative things, like I want to take the time to acknowledge you that for me, I thought that that intro is really cool. Like it felt professional. It felt, you know, and like, I want to acknowledge you because that I'm going to give you that feedback because you took, you're brave enough to take that step and do this. Yeah, so, you know, yeah, man, for sure. Yeah. It's, it's, it's weird just kind of putting stuff together. And that, that came to me over so many iterations, just like this mm. podcast, just like all the thoughts or, you know, different yeah. notes that I've taken, who I want to interview. It's, it's been so much, but it's such a, uh, it's kind of a relief and also, you know, a good feeling to just finally put things out there when you have them all bottled up. Yeah, it starts. Yeah, you got to get them out. Creative man. regret. It's like it, it builds at you know. It it kind of digs at you a little bit. Dude, Cannon, you just opened me up to like, and this is what's great about this conversation. You don't have to ask me this question, but some <laughs> just tell. I also think because I'm learning a lot about mental health and things, and I think it's um, I'm trying to think. She does a lot of her work with vulnerability. So someone listening, she's a female, um, but she's really popular right now with her work with vulnerability. Renee, she talked. Brene Brown. You got it. Boom. Thanks brother. Okay. Yeah. So look, man, you know your stuff. And, um, so one thing she talks about, I don't know if you listened to it or heard it and it's in one of her books. My wife, uh, reads her books. Um, she talks about like, 
we're, we're, I think as humans, we're meant to be creative. And even if you're someone that believes in a God, God is the creator in, in his likeness or whatever. Like there's mm-hmm. so much interesting things there, but like she's doing some work. Like if you don't have a creative outlet, like it bottles up and like, you know, some people do things and get themselves into trouble because they don't have that creative outlet. And when you think about it and like looking at, at like teenage kids that are students, they like, don't have a place where they can, you know, outlet that creativity. They get themselves into trouble. Like it's this stuff. It's all, it's like, we already all knew this, but now we're actually kind of studying it and being present, or maybe we knew it generations ago and we're just rediscovering it. But that's something that's really interesting as a, you know, just for this podcast alone, if somebody's listening, you know, cause it revolves around, revolves around um, creativity in general. Um, but uh, yeah, we have to kind of have an, an outlet for it you know um like so. what's what's your outlet like i'm interested to see because you're you live a life as a creative and you make money and a living off of being an artist creativity mm-hmm. which would be some people's creative outlet which is drawing or painting or or whatever it is yeah. so what do you do outside of buster rhymes jamming out in the kitchen <laughs> and all that stuff like what do you yeah. do to kind of like step outside of what you do and and then you know helps recharge your batteries for your actual mm-hmm. work. What, what do you do? Yeah, and I think I think um, this is a great question. So thanks for asking. Um, I think I think it really comes down to how you frame things. Um, and again, we talked about boundaries on creativity and stuff. And I think there's times where there's you take the boundaries off and you put them on. And um, I think for me, there's times where you know, thankfully, again, my wife she she works in a place where she travels. So sometimes I get to go with her and, you know, maybe I just bring my sketchbook and it's not for a client. Like, and I just, you know, I let myself just go or there's, cause there's a lot of, you know, sketches or ideas that I want to produce, but I just don't have the time for them. And I, and going back to your question, even like going back to my history, if people want to get to know me a little bit. Um, you know, like art for me, like when I told you I battled like anxiety and all this stuff, drawing for me was actually a place where I could, um, you know, it was like my mental health stability, my, my, my security blanket. And I didn't realize it as a kid, but like it allowed me to explore myself and like, say I got in an argument with my brother or my mom or somebody's unhappy, happy with me in the family. And even now with my wife, if I take some space, you know, some people like to write in a journal. I think that works different things work for different people for me when i go to sketch or like draw something it allows me to like recap what happened in the argument these different things and i'm able to kind of like find myself you know and like you know just get that place of who i am and discover myself but when it comes to working with a client you know it can really suck you out of that and you can lose your you know you can lose your love for it So, and I've experienced that and I'm sure most creatives that you interview will say that. And I'm I'm, I'm a sports guy too. And you hear sports players talk about that too. Is like, you know, they just, they're like, what happened now all of a sudden in the playoffs, you're playing so well towards the end of the season, you struggled. And sometimes we'll even be like, look, I lost the love for the game. I was dealing with this over here. I started playing too much. Like, you know, even going back to that perfection thing. Um, so I think it's framing it, like making sure you make time to frame creative time or an outlet where you don't care what anybody thinks. It doesn't have to have a beginning or an end. There's no rules. You just do it for the practice of doing it, you know, and what it brings you just, you know, you're not even thinking about what it brings you, but it ends up bringing you something, um, you know, because you're not worried about what it's bringing you, you know? And for me, it's not just like art. But, um, you know, cooking and like cooking's fun because, you know, not only do you get to enjoy it once, you get to enjoy it again, you know, it's just the process, but you get to eat it. And I mean, baking is like a science. So like I've tried it, but like cooking, you can kind of like, you could be like a mad scientist behind there and you can put on some music again, maybe something different in Buster Rhymes. Otherwise, then like things are all over the place and the kitchen is really messy. But um you know, I have that as an outlet or even for me playing sports, like moving my body, you know, in the space that I have. And like, again, I've had a back injury 
And like, I always said, like, when I get healthy, I'm never going to take it for granted again. Like my wife makes fun of me, but she says, you know, she'll make fun of me and be like, Oh, I'm drew. I'm a professional trash can jumper, you know? And like, yeah, I mean, I'll go and jump some trash cans sometimes. Um, and that you could say that's a creative outlet, but what it is is that I'm just like letting myself just freely enjoy who I am in a, in a place of freedom. And like, if you can like find that within yourself and just be able to let go, whatever it is, it doesn't matter what, it really doesn't matter what it is, but it's going back to that playful place. And again, sometimes it's me just like, I mean, I'm a, I'm a big basketball fan. And again, I'm not embarrassed to say this in the house. Sometimes my wife is like walking towards me. I'll cross her up and do like a, you know, (laughs) I'll, I'll do like a Euro step. She thinks I'm crazy, but like she'll make fun of me. And then we're joking with each other. And we're in a playful kind of flirting place, you know? Um, But you know that, you know, the place when you're not in that playful place. And I just, for me personally, in my experience, it's just so hard to be creative in that place. So um, do you think it's, do you think it's tough for people right now? I mean, we're in such a stressful time. It's probably even harder to be creative because you're worried, like, especially from the creative standpoint, it's like, Do I pursue Mm -hmm. this because like, I'm just, you know, thinking about this now, like, do I pursue this as strongly and passionately as I feel about it when there's not, you know, when everything's kind of in limbo, like it's a, it's Mm -hmm. a scary time. Like, are there any, um, outside of, you know, these outlets, mantras, things you remind yourself, you know, what you do to kind of get in that playful state. Um, Mm -hmm. like for instance, like I used to use, um, different exercises to like, if I had a problem or something I I wanted to Mm -hmm. kind of expand upon in a creative sense and figure out different solutions. I had this, uh, this book thinker toys, which has Mm -hmm. like a bunch of different creative exercises where it's Mm -hmm. like, you take, um, you take aspects of whatever it is, a product, a service and Mm -hmm. whatever you're trying to solve and you flip, flip it and everything's the opposite. So if it, mm, you know, cool. if it's something you go into, it's what are you coming out of? Or, you know, it's, mm. it's everything's reversed. So you think about things a little bit differently. So I was uh, kind of mm. curious, like, do you ever use any exercises where you're like, okay, I have this problem. This is how, you know, let, let's play this game to figure out, or let's mm-hmm. you know, go through this exercise to figure out maybe how we can do things differently here. Mm-hmm. No, that's a great point. I think, uh, and you just highlighted game. And I think a game is another example of play, you know, there's strategy involved and like, even, you know, in this quarantine, I've been teaching my wife how to play chess. Um, she mentioned it to me. I bought a chess set on Amazon and we've been playing. Not only did that help us like connect, reconnect a little bit, but like we talked about strategy, we talked about all these things. And then Like then even like we were talking about creative ideas, just like, and how to be strategic with creative ideas. And like, you know, I think, um, you know, even just doing something like, like this is for, you know, we're in this quarantine time. Like, I think the best thing we can do, even if it's stressful, like lean into like whatever your fears are, this is the time where you get to deal with that. And it might be scary for you, but like, for me, I struggle a lot with my fears of, you know, not having enough money or financial and think about that. I mean, that's, you know, sometimes I, you know, when you work for yourself, you know, that's a big stressor. Mm -hmm. Um, But like I've leaned into, you know, like, let me take a break and let me just like, again, cook something I've never cooked before. And like, but you have to kind of each person's different and you have to know like what's comfortable for you. Um, Like for me, I kind of, certain things need to sometimes need to be a certain way. Like I, I kind of struggle with security, meaning like I need to know, okay, I'm having this amount of finances and this. And when I do that, I feel more comfortable to be expressive and creative. Whereas my wife, she doesn't care less. I mean, she could be completely broke and she's just like always, you know, she's a very creative person. Um, and like, we have a misunderstanding there, but we've learned to grow and understand. Well, she'll be like, oh, okay, Drew, you know, like this is, you know yourself well enough that you need to kind of take care of this thing. And once you take care of that, then you can go and have your fun, you know? And we all have our different rules for ourselves. And this is a great opportunity to learn ourselves. But even if you're struggling financially, like it's, it's like, you might not agree with me, but I would say it's still like 
finances aren't everything. It's still like, again, because finances, and again, even the way we value things, there's cost, price, and value. Like a lot of times when it comes to money, there's only like really one, like we only really focus on the dollar amount, but that dollar amount could have a huge impact on the environment. And that's a big cost. Mm -hmm. And we don't see that cost, but there's a huge cost in not allowing yourself to explore and learn who you are. So going back to your question, like it's, I think everybody should make time for themselves and their families or whoever their friends and invite people into it. Cause we all want to connect and we get ideas from other people when we're open, but do something different every day that you've never tried. Like even if it's something simple and if you're really busy, do it once a week, I guarantee, you know, you can come find me if it doesn't work for you, <laughs> you find me on social media, you can bad mouth me, whatever you want to do. Every week, if you just do one thing that you've never tried before, even something you don't like, you will learn something about yourself and you will, it will help you become a more creative person. And even like what you were just saying, like if you're already there and you're doing different things, you know, even if you, you know, it's not something different that you're doing, play a game. Like, again, just me and my wife just playing chess, like not only do we connect together, but we we came up with creative ways to even connect beyond playing chess. Like it was that action that created more action. Like we talked about before. Um, and I would say like, now that I've been teaching some classes, dude, I've learned like teachers are really creative people and they have a game for everything. Like, yeah. and I'll be honest, like now that I'm, you know, we're doing virtual, like I, like I said, I can't always make a lot of the meetings cause I'm part time cause I run my business and then I teach and I give back in that way but I've been trying to make a lot of the meetings virtually. So I know what the heck I'm doing because we're all in this together. We're all figuring it out. But ha half the time, we're not even talking about what we're doing. Like the first like, at, like half hour to an hour, we're just playing a game and like, and at first I was kind of like, what are we doing? Let's get, let's get to it. Like I don't have all day. Yeah. And then I realized like, who am I? Like, let me slow down. Like, these people are really creative. They're coming up with this stuff. And the next thing I know, we're talking about these crazy topics. It like, it was almost like, you know, you know, uh, the pushing the primer button before you, you know, start the lawnmower. Like, you know, if you look at it, this happens in all these facets of life. And, and, you know, if we take that and build it into the creative process, you know, um, that's just how it works, you know, or at least through my experience, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. You hit on some things that I think are, you know, I've realized, but you just saying that it, it, it does all flow together and it's not just for business. You know, it's not mm -hmm. just for creating ideas. It does create connections. Like, you know, you said, um, yeah. it carries over and just deepens the connection with you and your wife and, you know, mm -hmm. makes you kind of more open to connections and creative, you know, whatever, whatever it is. Um, so I think that's interesting. Um, and I know we wanted to touch on a few, um, you know, frequently oh, asked questions good. of yours. So I just wanted to have a little quick, you know, FAQ uh, segment that we could run through some of these questions to kind of wrap things up here sure. uh, that you typically get um, and just kind of get your thoughts on them. So just to uh, preface this, um, these are, you know, questions that Drew and I had talked about a little bit before that he usually gets. Um, from people oh, yeah. that uh, that he interacts with, um, so I thought it would be interesting just to kind of highlight those more specifically, get a quick little answer from you, um, and then we'll just run through. I think there's about uh, there's about five of them, so um, we'll get into the first one, which is um, how do you make money as an artist? Mm, yeah, so yeah, I get that question a lot, and just to kind of take offense to it, <laughs> um, you know. Uh, but really, I mean, any, any question people give you, it's just, you know, it's like, what a great opportunity. And if I don't have a great opportunity to learn, um, you know, about that answer and what that answer is for me. So, yeah, I mean, again, it's, you know, art itself, it's, there's many different ways to make money. And again, like I had stated before, you know, I always could draw and, you know, even me, I was like, okay, going to college, like fine art, what the heck can I actually do with this? So that's what's cool about me giving back and teaching like the students I can find, okay, what are they, where are they good at? And then I can help them open them up to opportunities, whether it's fashion design, you know, graphic design, video game design and development. I got some students doing that. And like, you know, cause I felt like I didn't, my school didn't have that for me to like connect me to those things. Again, I was just lucky that my mom said, you're going to learn these computer programs. 
So if you're someone that really likes to draw and, and illustrate, I mean, you, you can go out and you, if you have a style and you feel confident with it and you know yourself well enough and there's people that are interested in it. I mean, even me in high school, I wasn't great at drawing faces, but I love like uh, drawing basketball players. I'm a big basketball fan. And I would sketch the players and then I actually would, I would create the logo I'd, I'd draw the logo. So I was a big Sean Kemp fan again, dating my, dating myself here. For those that don't know, he dunked one time so hard on a chain net sparks flew. Now, I don't know if that's a real story, but as a kid, he was my favorite player once I heard that. But anyway, um, you know, got to throw a little color in this thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But anyway, I had issues. I had issues. So I, I'm, yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, the Sean Kemp. So anyway, um, uh, so what I did was I wasn't, I didn't feel confident in drawing faces. And, and over time I've learned to become like almost like a portrait artist where I just, it was something I knew was my weakness. So I, I exposed my weakness and just practiced it. And now I love doing portrait work, but going back to that, I started drawing the logos. So I would draw Sean Kemp, you know, with all his muscles, all that, just making him look huge, just having fun with it. The student, you know, my friends loved it. And then I do this uh, Seattle supersonics logo as his head. And I did like a series of those, like Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, whatever. Um, and kids, you know, kids, some students were like, you know, five, ten dollars buying them from me. And that's like, you never know, like you could be in high school and you could, you know, there's always a side hustle to it. Even if you decide to go to college and learn the graphics, obviously businesses need websites. There's website design, you know, logos and branding that's designed, business cards, any print collateral. You know, now we see ads pop up for our favorite sneakers or whatever, like a designer design that um, fashion design, you know, um, interior design for houses, things like that. I mean, everything you see, you know, was creatively thought about and premeditated for an experience. I mean, a lot of people that aren't creatives don't think about it, but they walk into a hotel like that hotel was all premeditated and thought about for the way that person is going to feel. And that person might not even know why they feel so comfortable or feel so well taken care of. And really it's just because of the way the place was designed. Nobody could even say hello to them. And they're like, I don't know about this place. I just really like it. You yeah. know? And um, so there's so many opportunities as an artist, but again, you could go back and you could discover that students are buying your work in high school and you can continue to develop that. And, um, and again, like me, even though I, most of my business is working with startups and helping them bring their vision to life through branding and, you know, anything they need marketing wise from a graphic design standpoint. Um, you know, I sell my own work and I've built up a following enough to like, you know, um, you know, even do some mural work and I've just kind of been riding that wave and I've allowed that to kind of build organically. But in the last, you know, a couple like year or two, um, I've been kind of exploring it more and more and putting more eggs in that basket. Um, but you know, there's ways like you can sell your, your art at a gallery, um, you know, and you kind of have to really create your brand there because people, you know, what makes one piece of artwork, you know, more exclusive than another. I mean, if you're selling prints, um, you can number them. So number the amount of prints that creates some exclusivity. Um, so it becomes like a product for you. Um, like for me personally, um, when it came to when Villanova in 2006 or 2016, rather won the national championship. I had someone commission me to do a painting of that. I made 250 limited edition prints and I, I think I have about 30 left and I never thought I would sell that many, but I got them in the right channels and the right places. I never thought I could do that with my art. You know, I knew it's possible, but you know, I took that leap and I tried that. So, so that's another way. Um, you know, so it depends on which avenue you t tend to choose. But, um, you know, there's always a risk, like you said. Um, but one thing is you have to make sure you're passionate about it. Um, and that's hard to tell. But my, my kind of rule of thumb is if you do it anyway, like you're doing this podcast right now and you're not necessarily getting paid for it. This is it. This is it for you. You know, yeah. or at least this is where you are right now. You're passionate about it. That, that well opened, uh, at well opened, if you guys want to follow me and my brother there. We're not getting paid for any of that. We're just creating content twice a week. And really it's my goal to, um, you know, I want to work on some of my illustration skills on the iPad Pro. This is holding me accountable. 
my brother's a life coach and he loves to write about mental health. Our relationship has gotten so much better. So there's not just the money piece, but like you find out about yourself. And that's, I think one thing we forget about as like, you know, financial is not always the, the part. And when we've, we let go of that control for, you know, some people have come to me, some of my business coaches and they're like, well, Drew, why are you doing that and put energy into that when you haven't figured out monetarily, you know, where are you going to take that? And my brother and I have discussed, you know, how we can make money off of it, but we're not, we're not there yet and we're not pushing it. It's actually happening organically. We just had last week, we had a person buy two prints. We weren't even selling prints. They connected to us. Where can we buy prints? And I was like, mm-hmm. you know, we've discussed creating a landing page but I'm waiting for my brother and myself to, you know, finish our bios. And again, it's kind of like back burner right now. We're mostly focused on consistently posting. It, it comes down to the consistency. Mm-hmm. Um, and we also had somebody buy one of the originals. They framed it. And on earth day, we posted it because it has, you know, it kind of can go with earth day there. So, I mean, we could co- talk about this for a long time, but I think, when it comes down to it is if you're passionate about it, you know, you're going to be like, they're going to see your passion about it and they're going to want to be next to that and connect with that passion. Um, You did cut out a little bit there. So just to kind of wrap up um, what, what you were saying, um, you know, basically it just comes down to you were, you were talking about passion, you know, and that kind of opening up the doors to, to how to, you know, make money. And yeah. Yeah. Cause it is, it, it can be difficult to make money and it's very competitive. Um, yeah, cause you know, there's a lot of ways to do it and there's a lot of tools there and people have access to the tools, but I think if you're passionate, it's gonna, it's gonna show through. Like even I would say the 20 graphic designers that went to school with me, probably five of them are still doing it, but the five that are doing it are just killing it. They're crushing it you know? So it kind of like, it is one of those tough, it can be one of those tough fields where, you know, it kind of weeds out the people that aren't passionate. Um, but when you're passionate, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna make money because we all need everything we experience in life was thought about and created and it was premeditated, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and if anything, things are going more in that direction because you have like, you know, you have tools that can do accounting for you now, you know, right. If you're someone that runs the numbers. Like that's scary. I mean, your job is kind of on, you know, and if you look on Instagram, I mean, there's so many artists that are being, you know, used even more now, like even on Netflix, there's a, there's a, uh, some, I think it's called, uh, I can't think of the name. My wife just watched it. She, we binged it. So we just went through the whole season, but it's all illustrated. And, um, you know, so even just illustrating a video or anything like that, it just tells yeah. a story. We're, we're humans. We love stories. You know, that's what we, we connect to. When we create a product, mostly what sells is a story, right? Exactly. You have to yeah. think about that story, you know, just, you know, so. Yeah. No, that's, that's good. That's a, that's an awesome, you know, answer to, uh, to that question for anybody that's, that's thinking about that out there. Um, mm-hmm. the next question leading into uh, how to add or justify value as a creative um, with regards to business. So um, it is, it is tough because it is subjective, but um, what are your thoughts on that? How do, how do you do that? Yeah, I think the fine art side is a very loose and hard to, it's a, it's a long question to kind of get into. And I think if you're someone out there that's just starting, you know, with a fine art career, it is something you kind of just have to put yourself out there and see because yeah, it can be very subjective. Um, but I think creating exclusivity on your artwork helps because then there's less and that creates a demand. Right. Um, and that kind of creates, you know, you know, as in business, it's supply and demand. Right. So that's just one simple way to do it. Um, and then of course there's like, you know, a skill set there, you know, obviously, sometimes you'll see art that's just you can say well dude i could do that and it's like and sometimes that's the brand built around it and art is interesting like when you're just selling fine art because in a way you know you're kind of in a way you you know you kind of have to be confident and know what your value is and 
and again, take that, that step and put yourself out there. And some people like stand by their value until someone actually, they find a buyer and then they just go from there. For me, I was kind of like, I struggled with that. And I think I was underselling myself a lot of the times in my fine art and in my graphic design side. But when it comes over to the graphic design side or anything design related, you know, it's, it, I think it's, I would suggest getting together with other close designers because sometimes style varies um, with cost and what that is. Um, but there is, there is more of an industry standard for graphic design. And there have been a lot of things that have come out like 99 designs or some of these, um, you know, even Canva where people can do it themselves or for cheaper that have kind of affected the industry and the cost, like with the 99 design, someone can go on there, get a logo created from people all over the world, pay maybe like $350, $350. They get a logo pumped out and they get to vote on which one they like, which is really cool. The guy, the people that created that, what a great idea, but it does kind of hurt the value for what we're doing. But for me, again, I know I mentioned this before with you, and I'm not sure what, how much time we got, but so just let me know because I can go Yeah, on. yeah, you can keep going. Um, but I, I joined some shared office space and I connected with um, three girls that ran a graphic design firm. So I met them. I was helping them out with some web design or web development because they just wanted to focus on design. And I was still new. So I was taking on any kind of work. And so they asked, can I help them with the development? So I'm, I taught myself a lot of HTML, CSS to kind of help myself survive and when website design and development. So, you know, it's not, it wasn't my favorite thing, but I'm like, okay, what are the costs here? They're going to pay me well. And I'm, you know, they've been kind of mentoring me and they kind of took me aside, kind of treated me like a little brother. And they were like, basically they, they were like, Drew, you can't be charging this. Like you're hurting the industry. You're affecting our prices. You know, um, it really affects the whole thing. It's like, you know, a drop of water and that ripple effect. And I just was like, well, I don't feel confident. Like, how do you, you know, they were charging, and I'll be honest, they were charging, you know, around $2,200 for, you know, creating a, a branding logo for a small business. And I'm just like blown away. Like, how do you, you know, I was charging maybe like $500, you know, and of course it, you can make your price bigger when you're adding more, like if you're doing more logo options. Mm -hmm. And more proofing cycles, meaning like, okay, we're going to, I'm going to do five logos for you. And then we're going to have a three proof process. So by this, by the second proof, you, you know, in the first one, you're like, all right, Drew, I like number one, but I love the colors and in, in number four, but I love the concept in number three. Can we combine those and we have a meeting? Then by proof two, we're working out, you know, those, those kinks. And then by proof three, we got like a final. So it's a really custom experience. They're not going to get that even on 99 designs. There's a lot of value there and they're building a relationship with you. You know, from there, they, you know, their brand, you know it well, and you can really, you know, whether it's, you're going to create their business cards or website from there, you're a trusted source. They can trust you on 99 designs. They're just getting a logo. They can't really change it much. They just get the vote on one. Um, and then they taught me like having this style guide, and because I was like, how do you charge that? You know, and they showed me they, they pretty much create this comprehensive style guide that, you know, sounds simple on the surface um, about like, you know, the color codes, you know, Pantone colors. So if you go and you're going to, you know, you're a restaurant, you're going to paint the inside of your walls, like making sure that the color from, you know, the logo digitally matches the one that you're going right. to be painting on your walls. Typography, you know how to use the type and then the logo itself, how to give it certain space between objects when it's placed on a website, on print material. Big companies have this. I just never really thought about it. Um, but it gives them, you know, explanation on how to keep it consistent. Cause let's face it. Like if your brand is showing up differently in different places, even if you have a good logo, you're going to lose your audience, you know, but the way I've learned to kind of sell it to my clients too, and you kind of have to be a salesperson as well, but if you believe in what you're doing and I know it's going to be good value for them, I work with a lot of small businesses that, you know, maybe they're hiring an intern or they have an intern going to do their social media for them or some of these other things. I tell them like, look, I know you're going to have that intern. 
you don't want to spend a ton of time redoing things for them all the time. You need to spend time on what you're doing. This style guide can provide you all the instructions. You hand it off to them. They, they can follow all the rules and make sure everything's consistent. And then if they have an issue, like they're, they're struggling with something, you could just point back to the style sheet. It makes your job so easy. Saves yeah. you time, saves you money. And they're just like, wow, I never thought about it like that. <laughs> and then I'm just like, yeah, you know, not only that, but for me, it's great because if I'm not going to work with them from that point on, it ensures that my logo gets used properly. And then I'm proud to show like, oh yeah, check out this company I did this branding work for. Then they're using it properly as opposed to like, then you go look at their site and you're like, oh, what did they do to it? You know, and you're like, <laughs> son of a, you know what I mean? Yeah. So there's so much extra value there, but that is just one thing when it comes to branding where, you know, for me personally, that helped me understand the value of things. And again, it's just, you have to take that action step and see, but you can also do some research online too. And, you know, when it comes to graphic design and see what, you know, there's usually a range and sometimes it depends on your city as well. So. Right. No, that's great. That's definitely probably helpful for a lot of people out there. Um, on their own or just in general, just knowing what, what their worth is and what their work can, can be. Um, establishing your audience. How do you go about establishing your audience? Um, I'm in the process of figuring mine out. So I wanted to see how do you, how do you do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good question. I think, um, I know you and I, before we got on, talked about like creating a boundary for creativity and, you know, and, and whether the idea of like honing in on one specific, you know, um, group or like types of businesses that you're going to work with is the better approach, like super narrowing down as opposed to being open to many different businesses. And I think when you're starting out first, you know, it's, it's always easier to kind of just take on any work and then see what you like. And if you're unsure, it's okay. Just be real with yourself that you're unsure. And then just go out there again, take that action that I talked about and see what shows up and what you like. And I would say for me, I'm still at a place where, you know, I think I had a focus of on my graphic design side is working with small businesses that are struggling with, you know, how to bring that vision to life. Maybe they created a logo for themselves and, you know, they know they need to take it to that next level because they go to a meeting, they give out their business card and they just like cringe, like, oh, this doesn't represent who I am. And, you know, let's face it. I mean, human psychology, you know, you meet somebody for the first time, we judge people, you know, it's a, you know, first you know, love at first sight or whatever it is, but like, you know, you want to make sure you're putting your best word. And if you feel confident with that, you know, things just open up for you. So visually, that's what I like to provide to, to um, small business owners. And that's what my focus is. But I tend to work with like, you know, the plumber or the restaurant or your favorite food truck or like Workhorse Brewing worked with them, you know, did a lot of graphics in, in their place or, you know, so it, um, you know, each client has its own and I'm, I'm committed to learning new things. So it's never, it never gets dull. I get to learn something new, but again, then the downside is, you know, when I'm not specialized, um, you know, I kind of have to take the time to learn the business. So I have to kind of wear that hat to know how their business works to really speak the language to their audience. So they're also sometimes, you know, there's a, there's an extra cost there where, you know, you have to take time doing research and, you know, whereas when you hone in on one specific audience, you know, the downside to that is economic turn. Like right now, you, you were saying restaurants made a great point. Restaurants are struggling. If you're working just with restaurants, that could really hurt, you know, your business. Um, but at the same time, you can easily more come up with a system that works. Each restaurant, you know what questions to ask. You've known what issues come up when you've dealt with restaurants before. So there's no real, I don't know what, what is the right one, but I do think um, paying attention to yourself and like, what do you procrastinate on? Like for me, that's been helping me find my audience more. What projects do I tend to procrastinate on? And other projects where I'm like so excited, like I wake up in the morning, I'm like, oh, I can't wait to like sit down and work on this one. It's a good indication that that's where your audience, you know, maybe you should move more in that direction. So pay attention to that. I would say if you're someone that's questioning that and, you know, again, be kind to yourself. Cause even somebody like me that's been doing this for a while now, I'm still learning, you know, and it's evolving as it goes. But if we're waiting for it to just be perfect and we know exactly who it is, 
you know, we're just going to be stuck, you know? So. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's a good, uh, good answer there. And then, um, you know, I, I guess it kind of goes in, in with that is just kind of focusing on, on one field, um, one audience, uh, in general, or have a more broad approach approach, but you kind of, you kind of touched on that with that last, uh, that last answer. So, um, this is all good stuff. I mean, there's so much that I'd, I'd love to get to, but I know, um, we both got, uh, we got, we got to run here and we got other things going on, but, um, yeah, like I said, I cooked up that bolognese sauce, man. I know. Yeah. I don't want it to get cold. So, you know, a little lamb in there. I mean, fresh garlic, you know, that'll be fresh, man. You know, sounds so Uh, good. Yeah. Yeah, I, I appreciate you, uh, you hopping on today. You know, I, uh, would love to, to come back and, you know, as I'm figuring this out, do more specific episodes on, on other things, um, you know, that we weren't able to, uh, to touch on today, but I think we got to a lot of good, good stuff, good nuggets out of this, uh, this conversation was fun. So thanks again, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. I appreciate you taking the time too. And it's, you know, even myself just doing this, like, you know, I feel like I can be long winded and stuff. Maybe I'm just being, you know, thinking about that too much, but I think we're growing, we're growing together in what we do, or even just podcasting and coming on i mean i haven't done a lot of podcasts coming on but um you know i'm learning as we go and uh i appreciate the opportunity and yeah. you know this is helping me helping you and that's what it's all about at the end of the day right so yeah man it's 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 like know. that uh that collaboration like you know this is a new new area for me you know and and i'm uh i'm pretty open with that so um anybody who's who's interested in doing that along with me is uh it's awesome so yeah, yeah let's grow together dude let's do it yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will enjoy that bolognese and uh and yeah, I'll, I'll post through stuff um and links to uh to your well opened and, and all that stuff. I'll get all that geared up. Sounds good. And uh sounds good. We'll yeah, talk. and if also too, we didn't talk about it, but if you're somebody looking for something to do and you got a yard, get out there and garden, man. It's getting nice out. And I could tell you that is another way to channel some creativity as well. Get out there seeing things grow. And it's a good metaphor for life. You really have to take care of things and ideas you got to write them down you got to put them in a place sometimes the ideas don't make sense now or you might think they're cool but they don't apply two years from now you'll look at that idea and it's relevant for something you're working on and you had it you know and it grows and you're planting those seeds so to speak so that's that that's another great. connection there but all right i uh, like Ken, that i, appreciate I like that a lot it. yeah man yeah i mean it's uh yeah i'll have to have you over after the quarantine i've got a. Uh, I mean, again, we'll just go on and on and on, but I got a bunch of stuff. I just planted probably over 500 seeds over last weekend. So, God. yeah, man. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Send me some picks. Well, you got to remember, probably about 150 of the seeds will actually germinate. So that's the same thing, too. Even if you think an idea is dumb, write it down, people. Don't think it's dumb. Don't count yourself out. Now, some of us count ourselves out and don't let other people say it's dumb. We say it's dumb first. Don't do it. Write it down. You don't have to show it to anybody. Plant that seed, all right? Yeah. That's good advice. Thanks, man. I appreciate right. it. A lot, a lot of good stuff here today. Um, get to that bolognese, enjoy it, <laughs> and uh, we'll chat soon. All right, brother. Peace. Have love. Later. Later.